All right, hey everyone, I'm Alex. And if you don't know who I am, I'm the founder and developer of ESL with Purpose. Here, I think my live stream had an issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and have all of you hop in here on this live stream. And I'm gonna be sharing this link in the other spot. So give me one second. And I'll get that done. Do, 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 do. Um, so here's where the live stream really is. I'll tell everybody there was a thing, I don't know, YouTube didn't have the spot where I could just go live immediately on my actual video. So here it is. I'm gonna send you everybody here the link to go here for it. So now you're here with me, should be, to join me live. Um, I'm live here. So thanks for your patience, I appreciate it. And if you have any questions, you can ask me here, but I wanna get started with phrase it. So how to play this game? So I've been teaching English for over 10 years, and I realized phrasal verbs are really difficult for English language learners. And so I wanted to do this. We're gonna play two games tonight. The first game, I want you to listen and um, spell. So you can use the chat here. I want you to type, listen and type in the chat. So here we go. I'll say the word, you, you type. So go up, go up. You can type it below. So that should be the live stream. So if you type go up, I'll say the word, you type in the chat, go and up. And then I can give you the spelling at the end. So that's one way you can use these cards. If you're teaching online, maybe you're a teacher watching this as well. Um, we can do that. So let's do that. Listen and type. I'm going to say this word and I want you to type it in the chat. Ready? Turn down. Turn down. Can you type it in the chat? The first person to type turn down in the chat will get five points. So how do you spell turn down? All right. Are you able to chat? Can everybody chat here? Is it working? Turn down. I'm going to have you say turn down, and you can type it in there. No? OK. Well, this is how you spell it, turn down, T-U-R-N-D-O-W-N. -N. And that's how you spell turn down. Hey, Jorge, you got it. All right, five points for Jorge, way to go. All right, here's the next one, ready? Listen and type, are you ready? First person to type correctly gets five points. Oh, all right, great. Okay, so I guess it's the, the delay on the video here. Are you ready? The next word, make sure of make sure of that's a funny one right make sure of what do we make sure of how would you spell that what do you think go ahead and type it in the chat and i'll wait make sure of i should play some music like or something like that all right okay if you don't know how to type make sure of here's how you type it make sure of make sure of it's confusing because it has the s and you actually have to say the sh sound but there's no sh like in normal english so sure is actually sounds like the sh but this is how we actually spell it all right let's play the next one let's see if you know this one i'll say it you listen and type ready try on try on what do you try on? Try on. How do you spell try on? Can you do it? Try on. Try on. What do you try on? Type in the chat and it should come up. Mm -hmm. Try on. How do you spell try on? First person to type and it comes through, you'll get five points. Like Jorge, he already has five points. All right, Oliverth, you got it. Oliverth, you got try on for five points. All right, so so far, Jorge and Oliverth, you both have five points. Good try. We're going to do the next one. We'll do two more, and then I'm going to teach you another way to play that's really fun. I think there's a little bit of a delay in the chat, so I will wait for you 
Boy, I just talked very fast English. I'm sorry. Um, I said we will wait for the delay in the chat. Okay, here's another one. Many people are doing this at home, uh, and this is a word we use a lot in English. Ready? Listen and type and spell. Here we go. Get through. Get through. Can you listen and spell? Get through. What do you get through? So I'll wait here as you do that. Get through. First person to type the correct spelling will get five points. Get through. And I'm going to let other people know that we're live on this other channel because the thumbnail I had actually didn't uh, didn't allow me to share on the, the pre-video I made. So I'll let other people know. Yay. So thanks for joining. If you're just tuning in as well, get through. So the word is get through. I'm going to have you type and spell get through. Close. Not quite, Oliver. Good guess. Anyone else? Boy, that's interesting. It sounds like jet true the way you typed it, but good. Um, but it's actually get through. Get through. This is how we spell it. So good try. All right, we're going to do one more spelling word, and then we're going to do another version that's really fun. Okay, the next word is you might have a question, so you do this. Listen and write ask about ask about ask about <laughs> ask about what do you ask about yeah jorge got it five points jorge way to go i give you a high five um digital one you know stay safe right hey so ask about, yes, that's how you spell it. So Jorge, you win, you have 10 points. Oliver, you get five points. Good job, that was the spelling game. Now, oh, good job, Oliver, you got that one too. Okay, let's play the next one here. The next one we're gonna play is check out. Here's how we do that one. So the, how we play this next game is called finish the phrase. So I will show you the card and say the word and you have to answer and name something like, uh, what is something you check out? So let's practice. Go ahead and type for me. Name something you check out. What do you check out? And if you're just joining us, we're doing make a phrase. So you listen and hear the word and see it, and you write your own in the chat. So over here in the chat, I'm going to have you say, check out. What is something you check out? Write what you think. Well, when... What is something I check out? Maybe when I'm traveling, I go to a library. What do you check out? It can also mean to look at something. So what do you check out in your life? Let's do this as a practice round right now. After that, we'll do more and you'll get points for those. What does check out actually mean? Well, the definition of check out means to look at something and observe something but it also means to borrow something. Yeah, I know. English is really hard, Peshwa. I understand. Check out, though. Check out means to um, borrow uh, a book from the library. So you might check out a book from the library, or you might check out a, um, like to check out the store and see if they have milk. So you might go there and check that out. Hey, good spelling, Peshwa, on get through earlier. Yeah. But if you're just joining us again, uh, we're playing the make a phrase game. So check out. What is something you check out? And you can type that in. Okay. We're going to do another one now. Ready? Our next phrasal verb is, uh, let's try. Ooh, here's a better one. Take out. Take out. What do you take out? What is something you take out? Oh, yeah. Jorge, you're right. From earlier, check out a booking. Yep, you do that. Now let's talk about take out. Oh, yeah, you're right, all of Earth. Check out. Same as looking for. Yeah, you're right. 
What about this one now? Let's think about this one. Take out. When do you take out something? You take out what? What do you take out? Yeah, you're right, Jorge. You take out a loan. Five points for you, man. You're like on a roll here tonight. That's an idiom, by the way. You're on a roll. Like, what do you mean? Like, roll? Like, I'm rolling? No, on a roll means you're winning. You're doing well. Um, you're doing good. So that's an idiom we'll say, on a roll. Anyway, take out. Yeah, you take out a loan from the bank. You might take that out. Or um, my children, when they're fighting, uh, one of them might take out the other one. Okay, not really. They don't take them out, but I, I hope they don't. But that's another expression. It, it's an action verb. But most of the time, in most native English-speaking contexts, you're going to see this as to borrow, like I need to take out a loan from a bank. So great. Okay. So that is another one for make a phrase. We're going to do another one. Here's another phrasal verb. Also with take. Oh, yeah. M-A. Great. Yes. We take out the trash. You are right. Mm -hmm. Peshwa. Yeah. You check out your bag from earlier, the word earlier. Yeah. You're right. Excellent. Okay. The first person that can type the answer to this one or something, name something that you do with this, I'll give you five points. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. Take apart. What do you take apart? And what does take apart mean? Like take apart? What do you mean take apart? Yeah, take apart. You take something apart. Apart means this one. Take, usually in English, we're like, well, give it to me. I take it, right? Um, oh, thanks, Anhua. Appreciate it. Very nice of you to say. But take apart. Name something in the comments here, in the chat. Name something you take apart. What do you take apart? I'll wait. Do, do, do. It means to remove into smaller pieces. Yeah, that's another good one for check out Peshawa too, for look at your home, check out your home. Yeah. All right. But I'm looking for this one now. Take apart. What is something you take apart? Hmm. Hmm. Take apart. Comment here. I want to hear your ideas. Then I'll give you some examples. Take apart. What do you take apart? It means to remove into smaller pieces. Take apart. I'm going to wait because the chat. So name something you take apart in the chat. Oh, yeah, earlier, take out your dog. Yeah, I guess you take out your dog for a walk. That's right. For, for this one, take out that you said Peshwa earlier. Yeah. Take is a confusing verb in English. You know, take out, take apart. We use take a lot. We'll say take over, take in. Yes, Duong, you got it. Five points to Duong. You said the first one for take apart, so you get five points. All right. Woohoo. So, so far, Jorge has five, and Duong, you have five points uh, for take apart because you were the first one to type in here. Yes, take apart choice. Okay. Sometimes your chat might be delayed. I'm sorry. I can't control the delay on YouTube. Um, I'm doing the best I can here, and we'll we'll push push through as another phrasal verb means keep going. All right, you ready to do a couple more? Are you getting excited? Let's play a few more. And if you are the first person to type the answer to this question or this one, you get five points. So so far, Duong is tied with Jorge with five points. Are you ready? Name something, or name a place or a time when you. Get up. Get up. Name a time or place where you get up. And that's G-E-T-U-P. Get up. Well, I wonder if the mirror, if it's not recording right, because this one, yeah. Anyway, get up. Hmm. When or where do you get up? And what does this mean in English? So if you're just joining us, we're playing make a phrase where I say this word and over here in the chat, you answer with a sentence or expression like get up, when, when do you get up? So type in the chat here and I'll give you five points if you're the first person to type. Can you do it? When do you get up? When do we say this? Get up means to physically go up from something. So 
a lot of times we'll say wake up in English, which is another phrasal verb, and that means this one. Wake up is <sighs> that's to wake up. But to get up is like to physically move from one. Yes, Oliver, if you got it, five points. Get up from the floor. Way to go. High five. Handshake. Um, awesome. Yep, five points for Oliver for get up. First one to type that. Awesome. And that means, yeah, you get up on the floor. But as far as time, we also say I get up in the morning. I get up early. We'll use the adverb for time. We'll say like get up early. Great job. Okay, next one. Are you ready? We've got more people now coming in. So if you're just here with us again, I will say the word and you type what you think a phrase would be. Ready? I know, Peshwa. English is so hard. This is kind of my, my, my lesson tonight is kind of high intermediate advanced English, um, but we can go back to some simple spelling activities again another time. I might do that again next Thursday for spelling, okay? But here we go. Here's your next word. Listen and comment uh, and write something you find out. What do you find out? Find out. Hmm. Find out means to learn or discover something new. So if you find out something, you just found out. Oh, I just found out about, hmm. Uh, so comment and type in English, what do you find out? What did you find out? I'm excited to hear. First person to finish the phrase of find out gets five points. Do, yeah. Oh, I wish I knew how to read Russian. I'm so sorry. Or if it's Ukrainian, please forgive me. Um, but yeah, whoever the Russian name is, uh, find out a secret, you get five points. Excellent. If you could type the phonetic spelling of your name, that would really help me. Uh, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's, oh, Duong, good one. Find out what happens next to you. Yeah, that's good. Oh, and someone else, Peshwa, going back to get up. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Good. Yes. I like that one. You do find out a secret. Uh, maybe my daughter tells me, Daddy, I have a secret to tell you. I found out that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. It's when you discover something strange. Yeah. Whoa. I found out there's old milk in the refrigerator. Or I found out there's green mold on my bread. Whoa. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to find out about that. That's disgusting. Okay. But, yes when you discover something. So yeah, so far the Russian name, and if it's Russian, please, if you're not, please correct me in the chat. I don't mean to offend you if I did. Um, but yeah, I just, I can't read the Russian. Um, but yeah, excellent. Find out. We did find out. I find out the meaning from a dictionary. Yep. Yep. Good job. So there are like four people tied with five points. If I've given you five points now, remember that because I might forget. And then at the end be like, no, you gave me 10. I'll be like, okay. So anyway, next one. This we use with computers. Yeah, Duong, you're right. You must find out how much the ticket will cost. Exactly. Especially if you're getting on an airplane or train, which might be really cheap right now to, to buy an airplane ticket. Uh, but yeah, or like for a concert or even an online course or a, um, like an online concert, um, you might have to find out how much that ticket would cost. And yes, uh, Ahmed, you'll find out the meaning from a dictionary. Yes. Uh, okay. Here's another word, log on. So comment in the chat here, log on. Name a time or what do you log on? Hey, hi, Ezequiel. Ezequiel? I don't know. Mi español es mal. It's not very good. My Spanish is bad. Uh, but yeah, hi from Argentina, sweet. My, um, actually, uh, so as you're thinking, the rest of you, as you're thinking uh, about log on, as you type log on, what is something you log on? You do this like maybe every day. What do you log on? I log on my, hmm, and fill that out. Uh, but also speaking of Argentina, my illustrator, I have an illustrator from Argentina. <laughs> Thanks. Um, my illustrator actually helped publish my children's books that I wrote called A Moment with Mommy and my children's book, A Moment with Daddy. If you go on Amazon, you can find those books. But yeah, oh yeah, Lana, great. Found out, my best friend, yeah. You can find out about that from earlier, yes. And Peshwa, yeah. Ah, Duong, you got it. 
Five points more goes to Duong. I think you're at 10 now. Log on to a computer. You are correct. You log on to a computer. Yeah, Jorge, you're right. You log on to your email. Sorry, Jorge, though. Uh, Duong beat you. So she has 10 points. I think you have five. Uh, but yeah, you log on to a computer. And so that's that's what you do. I mean, I log on to my computer every day for work or helping others. Um, that's what you do. And you might say tablet. You might log on to um, maybe you're, if, if you're in a, a big company where you have a factory where you have to work, you might have to log on uh, your time card. That might be, but that might be on a computer too. You have to log on the time card as well. But usually we log on for email, computers, you got it. Yes, Ezekiel, I know you came in a little late, uh, but yes, we covered that earlier. Find out means to discover, correct. Yep, to discover. Also, uh, for those of you who don't know, if you come go to my website, um, eslwithpurpose.com, I'll make sure I'll have it in the comments uh, at the end of this uh, game we're playing. Uh, and you can actually download 70 of my phrasal verbs for free. I actually define all of the ones. Uh, well, actually, I don't define these two, but I have this. I define all 70 of these. Uh, if you go to my website, uh, there'll be a pop-up, and you can sign up for all 70 phrasal verbs uh, defined. Okay. The next one is, are you ready? I'm going to have you listen and type, what do you clean up? What do you clean up? Type something you clean up. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I clean up my what? What does this mean? Clean up. It's similar to clean, but as a phrasal verb in action, too, we'll say, I clean up my, or I need to clean up the, or I told my daughter to clean up the, oh, yeah. La I think it's, is it Lana or Yana? Uh, you log on to Facebook. That's right, from earlier. Yep, you log on. The earlier word, yep. You log on to Facebook. Bedroom, yes, Ezekiel. You get five points for the first one on clean up. You clean up your bedroom. Um, you could say clean up Facebook too by, you know, uh, not joining certain groups and things like that. So you can clean up. Yes, that is right, Anhua. You clean up your disk space on your computer. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great examples, you guys. I always clean up my messy room. <laughs> yeah, you need to. Um, I tell my kids every every day, uh, please, please clean up your room because daddy is tired and I don't want to clean up the room for them. They need to learn to do that because when they get older, right, they have to clean up their rooms when they live by themselves. <laughs> clean up my closet. Yes, you need to clean up your closet. Um, the idiom, though, I think Eminem said in that uh, to clean up your closet um, meant to like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a joke, uh, like to remove any bad things you might have hiding in your closet, or you might clean up your closet as far as like, um, negative things that happened to you in the past. Um, so it's kind of an artistic idiom expression for cleanup. Okay. So if you're joining us again, remember, I will say the phrase and you type in the chat, uh, an answer to that. So name somebody, <laughs> clean up your brain. Yes, that's a good one. <laughs> um, so here we go. The next one. Are you ready for the next one? We can do the next one. And I'm starting to lose track of who has what points, but I'm given, I've given out five points. Um, I should give each of you just like one point for trying. Thank you. You should all just, you all get one point for typing in the chat. Great. Okay. But those of you who have five points are the first to type. First person to type gets this. Okay. I'll stop talking. Here we go. Help out. Who do you help out? Name somebody or something you help out. Who do you help out? <laughs> and what does help out mean? It means to assist or provide uh, maybe even care, but usually assistance, like you help out somebody. So type in the chat here, who do you help out? <laughs> who do you help out? I help out my, or you could even say past tense. You know, you could even start changing this to help, not help ed. We actually say helped. It sounds like a T, but we spell it E-D. I helped my, mm -hmm -hmm. Or maybe you did this. You helped somebody. You could tell us about that. Yep, you clean up your door. Yeah, you're right, Peshwa. Yes, Ahmed, five points, Ahmed. You help out your baby, yes. Um, we might say that, like I help out my baby by changing their diaper. 
<laughs> I have a uh, almost two-year-old son, uh, and he is still in his diaper. And I help out my wife by changing that diaper. Yes, yeah, so you might help out that. Um, or you might hold your baby's hand. You might help him out. Um, and we can use it in past tense, too, in English. So try that with me. Let's say that together. Helped out. So if you're just watching this, let's practice that. Helped out. Not help ed. Um, uh, if, if a past tense regular ed verb in English ends with a P sound, it's almost always going to be a T pronunciation, in, especially in American English. I never say help it. We'll say helped out. He helped out his baby, right? Or we helped out our family, um, right? Yeah, it kind of sounds like that, but it's actually spelled this way. Here, I'll type it in there for you guys. Help. It, it does sound like that, but it's kind of more like help, help to out. This is incorrect spelling, but that's how it would actually sound. Helped out. But the correct spelling is this one, helped out. And that's your correct spelling, helped out for past tense. Anybody else want to say, what do you help out? Who do you help out? Yeah, no? No? Okay. We're going to do a couple more cards, okay? Are you ready? We're going to do – so if you're just joining us again, we are saying make a phrase. I'll say the phrase, and then you type over here in the chat what you do. Help out my baby and help my baby. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good one, Ezekiel. Okay, I'll answer that quick for you before the next word. So his question, if everyone sees the question, Ezekiel uh, said, is that what is the difference between saying help out my baby and help my baby? Why don't I just you know take the out out? Well, help out actually has a deeper meaning where help out means really to that assist, um, like like you're but you might be assisting someone else. So. I would say help out my baby in that I'm helping out my baby to understand their math. Um, I guess if they're a baby, they're not doing math. Unless they're, sh you got a really smart baby. Maybe they are. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> that would be that. Um, but it's usually similar. Help out is, yeah, you help out a lot of poor people. You're right, Duong. That's a good one. Um, but to answer your question again, uh, help out my baby and help my baby. It's it's very similar, to be honest. Um, sometimes we'll just say, I need to help my baby. Uh, or I'll help my kids. Uh, often I say, like, help my kids. Um, we don't really use baby as much in help out, but it, it can be used that way. Yeah, Peshwa, I help out my sister. That's that's right. You would do that. Um, I'm just trying to think. Help out has a little bit more stronger feeling of assistance where help could mean any kind of help. That would be your biggest difference between help out and just to help somebody. Like, I help out my grandma or I help my grandma. Um, if I helped out my grandma, the picture most English speakers have in their mind is like, maybe I'm like holding my grandma on her arm, you know, or maybe I'm, I'm helping her to her table or I'm uh, helping out my wife by doing the dishes for her. Um, yeah, you can help. I don't know if we'd say help out myself. Uh, good, good question, Duong, but we would actually just say I help myself. We wouldn't say help out. We would just say I help um, in that situation. But for someone else, we'd say help out. Okay, good. We're going to move on. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, Nafishkan. Yeah. I will help you out with a new lesson. Yes. That's what you tell your students. I'm going to help you out with phrasal verbs because they are so confusing. It's like, why don't we just make it simple? You know, it's like, duh, duh, duh. in most other languages, they do. Hello. Oh, someone from Korea. Annyeonghaseyo. Okay. Here's another one. This one you use in a very interesting situation. I'll give you a hint. You use this word in the kitchen. So first person over here to type something you do with this word, you get five points. Are you ready? Cut up. Cut up. Name something you cut up. What do you cut up? All right. Name something you cut up. I'll wait for that one. <laughs> what do you cut up? What is something you cut up? <laughs> and this means like similar to chop. Yes, Ezekiel, you get five points. Excellent. 
You cut up the carrots. Anybody else have something that you cut up? What do you cut up? Means kind of to chop, like. Uh, we use it when we're cooking. We use cut up when we're cooking. Um, also, um, I'm going to put below this video the link for my how to go shopping um, uh, video. I, I I go into a cooking store and there's some sh you know some very common phrasal verbs with cooking there. Um, but yeah, cut up. You cut up the carrots. Eliminate. Uh, cut up could mean eliminate uh, all of Earth, I guess, in different situations. Um, in an idiom, though, we'll also say cut up, not just for vegetables, but we might say, like, for dancing, we'll be like, he cut up the floor or she cut up the floor, meaning they were a very good dancer. We might say that with cut up. Um, but I don't know if we'd say it as much to eliminate um, as more of, like, to, to break into smaller pieces. Or the idiom like cut up the floor, meaning they moved in such great movements that it was like they were chopping the floor. And so we would say that. Yeah, Ahmed, you're right. You cut up meat. Cutting up turnips, cut up the paper. Yeah, good. Good examples. All right, we're going to do one more. And I want to tell you how you can use this game uh, for, for your own use at home. So ready for this last word? I did this on Mother's Day. Uh, in the United States, we celebrate Mother's Day. Uh, and that was last Sunday. I'm looking at my calendar. Last Sunday, May 10th, was Mother's Day. And in the U.S., on Mother's Day, we do this. Are you ready? So I kind of gave you the answer already. Here we go. I call back. Who do you call back? First person to type who they call back, you get five points. Right? Who do you call back? Who do you call back? Mm -hmm. Who do you call back? Call back means to return a phone call. It doesn't mean call my back. No, it means to return a call. Yes. Yep. It means to return a call. Mm -hmm. Call back. So who do you call back? How do you pronounce started? Um, started. Good question, Brandon. Started. It's not uh, American English. I'm going to make that second T a D pronunciation if you hear it. Started. Started. And for those of you learning, um, British English, they might say started, but American English, the way my accent is, I would say started. Even though I spell with a T, I say with a D. Yes. I call back my mom in mother dog. I think you mean my mother-in-law, um, Ahmed. I think that's what you mean, uh, mother-in-law. You call back your mother-in-law. But yes, because uh, Ahmed, you, you guessed first. I'm going to give you five points for trying. Uh, the spelling's incorrect, but good guess. You get five points. But yeah, who do you call back? Yes, she's available right now. Please call back later. <laughs> yes, <laughs> call back. You hear this in customer service a lot. If you speak uh, English and you have to help uh, others on business and you have to do a phone call, mm, they might leave you a voice message. Yes, we call you back. However, um, I would say we will call you back. So great job. We will call you back. Yeah, yes, yep. Mm -hmm because it's a future plan, so I would use will in that situation. But very common with um, customer service. Mountain. So Brandon, you want me to do a lot of pronunciation, but I will do that for you, okay? I'll do this other one. Um, I want to tell you all this one, though. Everyone else who's been working on callback, please, let's say this one together. We're going to do it in past tense. We don't say call ed, so say it with me. Called back. Called back. And it's like ED, but it's a D, so we'd say called back. I called back my mom on Mother's Day. Can you pronounce mountain? So that I would say mountain, not mountain, no D there, which is interesting because some of our T's are D's. But for that one, I actually do say the T, and my tongue goes right behind my T. So there's a tiny little space, as you can see here, to make that T sound in American English. T, if you can see my tongue, that's how you get that sound, mount. And 
Mountain. Got it? Good practice. Okay, I said one more, uh, and this was going to be the last one, but let's do one more. Okay, we'll do one more, and then I'll wrap up for the night, and we might try this again in the future. And I just talked very quickly, meaning we will do this again. But this one, you need to solve a problem with this phrasal verb. So first person to type in chat, you get five points for this. What do you figure out? What do you figure out? Name something you figure out. I figure out what? What do you figure out? And it means to solve something. So the first person to type, figure out. Jorge, boom, five points, Knuckles. Okay, by the way, Knuckles in English. Uh, yes, Jorge, good job. You figured out a problem. Knuckles in English is like this. We'll be like, we'll do fist bump. And it's something fun we do with like our kids and, and other guys and gals so think you can do this. They'll say, uh, we'll say uh, fist bump, boom, or um, high five. They're kind of like the emojis. If you see on Facebook or even here, you know, you can type the emojis on your, when you're texting, you do the little, little fist bump. It doesn't mean they're going to punch you. Uh, in some cultures, you may be, but this actually is like a positive gesture in American culture. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it means like, Hey, fist bump or like high five. Good job. So yeah. Yes. You figure out that you need to study more English. Yes. See. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I can't figure out how to do this. Yeah. That's a very good one. Yeah. Good job. All right. You guys did awesome tonight. Uh, but I think Jorge had the most points. So everybody give Jorge a hand. Good job, Jorge. You can even say what go Jorge uh, for winning, but also go all of you. You know, because English is not easy, and I think this will help you. I think my passion and goal is to help you go from here to here with your English, but not just any English, English that will help you thrive, because Americans talk like this every day. We say phrasal verbs every day, and so if you want to learn more phrasal verbs, um, you can check out my eight-week online course. Um, I'll put a link here in the comments for that online course you can get where we go through lots of common situations with phrasal verbs in American English. Um, also, you can get this deck to practice along with this one. Um, the words we used tonight were a mixture of this deck and this deck. Um, so there's 70 phrasal verbs in this one, 50 phrasal verbs in here, plus 50 common nouns in American English. Yes, Ezekiel, yeah, English, oh cool. Awesome. Yeah, Duong, it is so hard. You guys are right. And yeah, Americans use a lot of slang. If you follow me on TikTok, uh, my most popular video has like 55,000 views because I just did English slang words you need to know. Um, also here on YouTube, I did a, a, a four video series free that teaches you 15 English slang words you need to know. Like let me means let me. So you can see that. Um, but also if you are a teacher, maybe you're trying to teach English to students in your own country. English may not be your first language, but you want a fun game for them. This would be a great game to play online with your students, um, just like I'm doing here with you. You can do spelling, past tense, present tense. You can do that, um, but you can get phrase it. Just go online to Amazon. Also put links here below this video at the end of the video. I'm going to do some more editing. I don't know why the one video didn't play and I had to have you watch here. Thank you for joining me, though. I appreciate it, um, but you can get this one. This one you can actually match like some nouns, like cut up the um the area <laughs> or i have some nouns like book um so you could actually do some fun matching like figure out the book um you could say things like uh call back the business um but i have 50 of the most common nouns and they're in blue you can actually you can differentiate them with the phrasal verbs so you'll know how to match them you know red is a verb the phrasal verb you know blue is actually um, a noun. So if you want to get my phrase it to deck, uh, go to amazon.com and just type in phrase it to, or go to my website, eslofpurpose.com. Plus it's not out yet, but if you want to practice contractions, I plan to make a future class on contractions called contraction action. This is going to be new. It isn't released yet. You can't buy it yet, but I plan to teach you all of the English contractions with another card game where you can match them for memory. So even children, your children, if you have kids learning English, it'll help you out. Um, thanks guys for following me. 
Um, if you want to hear, I'll just type my my stuff in here for you right now. If you go to eslofpurpose.com, there'll be a link in there. You can go to and get on Amazon, and you can buy my um, phrase it deck there. Also, there's a place you can sign up and get 70 or 70 phrasal verbs you need to know. Um, also, if you follow me on YouTube here, you can find some other videos. I've taught a lot on phrasal verbs. You can just watch me uh, watch some of those lessons on phrasal verbs. We'll help you. Um, I try to make one new free video every week if possible. Um, but if you want to go to the other link, I'll give that to you for my online course. Um, in fact, here, I'm just going to give you my phrase it links. And then I'll give you my online course after that. Um, thanks for your patience, by the way. Do -do 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 -do. Here we go. So here's how you can get phrase it. You can go here to get phrase it. Um, and then for the online course, you can. it's on Udemy or Udemy, however people pronounce that. Uh, I'm an English speaker, and I still get confused <laughs> with this one. Um, but I'm going to get you that link here. Um, and that's called Learn American English Online. Um, Learn-American-English-Online. Okay. And that should be my course on phrasal verbs for you. You can, And if you do take my course, please write me a review. I would really appreciate it. Also, again, as a reminder, if you're a teacher, there are so many things you can do with this card game uh, online to teach your students. Like I can just say the word and somebody can spell it. So it makes it so easy. Um, but with phrase it too, you get nouns with phrasal verbs. These are different phrasal verbs in the original deck. So if you were to buy both of these, you would get 50 and 50, you'd get 100 phrasal verbs or 70 and 50, sorry, 130. See, that's why I'm an English teacher, not a math teacher. 112 or 100, 120, <laughs> you get 120 phrasal verbs and 50 nouns that you can play with and match uh, for fun. Kids love this. Um, I've had my kids play it, um, so you can do that. But also, if you want to subscribe and follow me with my email list, um, you can click, go to my website, sign up for my 70 phrasal verbs you need to know, and you'll be added to my email list and when you do that, uh, when I'm ready, I'll let everybody know when this is going to get released so you can get contraction action because we say things like don't, do not, all of that. Um, yeah, so I'm getting some comments here. Thank you. I'm going to read through them here. I would like to know, can I get classes? Ah, practice. Actually, right now, um, I have a full-time job in the day. I'm actually, I work for a marketing agency full-time in the day. Um, I uh, taught at a community college, taught English. I teach English for free. Uh, here on YouTube, and I actually help create these resources for English teachers worldwide. Um, I don't have a one-on-one -on -one where I teach one-on-one -on -one yet. Um, I was on italki for a while, um, and I had a few students there. Um, I'm, I might consider it again, doing uh, live conversational classes again, um, but I just, I don't want to overprice everybody. <laughs> and so um, I'm doing a few free videos here as I can on YouTube. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of great English teachers out there. Um, and I'll try to make, yeah, Brandon, I'll try to make a short video on how to pronounce started. That's a hard one. Start, start dead. So let's try that. Let's just do it quick to get together. So if you're practicing your English with me, let's say it. Star dead. That's American English. Add that D in there. Star dead. Faster started. Star dead. Are you doing it? I can't hear you. Well, I can't because I'm here. But hey, I know you're trying hard. Started. Good. All right. Yeah. You're welcome, everybody. Hi, Wallacey. I'm sorry. We're a little late. We're wrapping up here. Meaning, <laughs> sorry, that's a, that's a phrasal verb. Wrap up means to finish. So you can at least learn that one. Wrap up means to finish or end. And so if you join me, I'm going to try and go live again in the future. Um, so if you want to sign up, go to my website, eslpurpose.com. Uh, the pop-up should come up and you can get 70 words you need to know, or you can scroll all the way to the bottom, sign up for my free Phrase It book, uh, which is a free download. It teaches you how to play Phrase It in many different ways, and you can do that. So if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the chat here on YouTube. Thank you all for watching. I hope this really helped you. And now I'm going to optimize this YouTube video at the end. And again, if you're a teacher, uh, get this. And if you buy phrase it online, write a review for me. It would really help because um, my goal and my passion is to help millions of English language learners go from here to here with the right resources. 
And so I'm continuing to develop products like Contraction Action and Phrase It to help you grow and improve. So, all right. So yeah, also go to Udemy. You can get my eight week course uh, and just start learning phrasal verbs that way. It will help you. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you here in the future on YouTube. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have questions. Thanks. And I will see you next time.